Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Well, as most of you know, the layout is now one year old. And I just want to take a moment to thank all of you for your support throughout the year. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I want to thank all the different manufacturers who have sent me stuff for the layout, those that have given me advice or done laser cutting for me. Uh, so thank you all so much. And a big thanks to those who sent me items for the layout, uh, even those who have sent me coffee. Uh, thank you guys so much. I, I truly appreciate it. So what I've done is I have created a playlist on YouTube. So if you click on my face that's in this circle above the video, uh, it will take you to my home page. And on the home page, there's a picture that runs across the top. Below that, there's, I believe, home, videos, playlists, community, it goes on. Uh, but if you click on playlist, there's a heading in there that is building a layout year one. And there are 21 videos in there that document how I built this. Starting with the first video where I painted the clouds on the wall. So like I said, there's 21 videos that document me working on this layout over the last year. Now, I will be starting a new playlist called Building a Layout Year 2. And so the newer videos that show me working on the layout will go in that playlist. So be sure to check that out. And they're all in order so you can watch from the beginning to the present of how I built this. All right, well, in today's video, taking a, a small break from the layout. And I'm gonna start working on some dioramas that are more science fiction based. I am a huge Star Wars fan. And fans of movies like Blade Runner, all of the Alien movies, Predator, uh, on and on and on, tons of science fiction movies. And I have collected toys for years. I even have all of the toys that I had when I was a little kid. Uh, I have saved everything. So uh, what I'm going to do is build some dioramas that display my toy collection. And I'll get into more details as we progress with the videos. Um, and the videos will probably be titled something other than Jason Jensen Trains. Um, on my thumbnails on YouTube, it'll probably say Jason Jensen Creations or Jason Jensen Art. I'll name it something else. Um, but the good thing is that most of the videos uh, the techniques that I will be using also work for model railroading or any scale that you're working in. Uh, say you're interested in gaming like Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer. All of this will apply to that. So uh, I hope that you join me on this new journey uh, and it won't be like every single video now uh, won't be on these dioramas. I'll uh, maybe do a video on it, come back, do a few videos on model railroading and then go back to the dioramas. So it'll just be a nice break for me. And like I said, all the techniques uh, that I'll be using also apply to this. So all right, well, let me turn the camera around and we'll go into my shop and I'll show you what I've been working on. So here's where I'm at on the diorama so far. And I've just been using everyday items. 
Um, it is so much fun now going to a hardware store and going down every single aisle and looking at things and thinking, how can I make this work in my diorama? Now, the scale is much larger. Uh, the figures that I'm using are about four inches tall. And I'll show you a couple. So it's your normal um, Star Wars and G.I. Joe figures. Uh, so that's about the scale that I'm working in. I'm using fans from broken computers. These trays are filters that go in the bottom of a fish tank that you put rock on. I'm using toys. I'm cutting up old Nerf guns and using them for backgrounds. There's uh, a box for electrical outlets. Um, I'm using styrofoam. I'm using hair rollers from the dollar store. Um, these can be used as is or you can separate them. You, know, you paint these to look like metal and you could put LED lights up through the center of them. Um, it just goes on and on. I have some tubing that I'll use. So as you saw, I'm just using a lot of found objects and now everything will be painted to look like metal and rust. Everything first gets a gray primer put over it. Okay, now we're going to make some made up parts to uh, paint and rust. I have a speed control knob off of a train set. Uh, I've got some bottle caps um, that fits right on there that's perfect um, I've got some other parts that I can glue on here uh, maybe this will put a, a steering wheel on the very top um, I have tons of model parts that I'll be using for details. Okay, so I glued all the pieces together and then put a gray primer on it. So I just took some raw umber and black and just started dabbing it on. You don't have to be neat about it. Just dab it on. You could even do it with a sponge if you want to. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to show you the salt chipping technique. So I just have a spray bottle and it just has water in it. So we're just going to spray it. Now you want to try to sprinkle on the salt where you want the rust to be. So you're going to want to do it along the edge, along the bottom. Okay, then we'll just start to sprinkle some up a little higher. And then around the top here. And if it starts to dry, mist it. Don't get too close. You don't want to have the salt fall off that you just put on. Light misting. I'm going to use some baking soda. And I'm going to put that, not much, 
but a little bit down towards the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna spray paint a color over the top of this. I wanna mention quick that you wanna wait for this to dry. You don't want that water to be wet. You want this to completely dry and then um, paint your color over it. So you're either gonna wanna airbrush a color over the top of it or spray paint. Um, brushing doesn't really work. It could, I've, I haven't tried it, but I would think that uh, the salt and stuff would come off. So you kind of need to spray it. This is completely dry and I just wanted to show it to you up close. Okay, now I'll go spray it. Okay, so I spray painted the entire piece uh, with this color. It's called Surf. Then, standing over the top of it, up kind of high, I sprayed this color over it. And it's called Aqua. Now, I left this sit and dry probably for about, oh, 20 minutes. Now, I'm going to take a stiff toothbrush that I bought just for my chipping effect and maybe I'll just leave that clamped we're going to scrub off all that salt and you can use your finger just like I am just want to get all of that off of there hopefully you can see that good Okay, now we'll go over it with a sponge and do some more um, chipping and scratches with the raw umber and a sponge. So I'm just using uh, raw umber. Okay, so I've got my chalks. I have a orange sort of terracotta color and then uh, a reddish orange. I'm just brushing it on. And if you haven't used pastel chalks, um, you'll be surprised how well they stay on there. Um, they don't come off. See, I blew it on it and it's staying on there. So there's no need to spray like a dull coat or anything over it. So it's kind of like dry brushing. We're just hitting the edges. We'll go in with some of the reddish color. Now I'm going to add some engine oil uh, just to make it look like maybe some grease is running out. I'm going to get my mineral spirits or my uh, white spirits here and thin this a little bit. All you have to do is touch your brush to it and let it run in the cracks. Okay, for the last step, I used crusted rust. And again, I used the uh, white spirits to thin it. So I think our piece is done. Hopefully you're really seeing all the detail on it. One more neat little trick is to use Mod Podge and make sure that it is gloss because they sell this in a mat and you want to 
you want to use gloss for this and it doesn't take much all we're going to do is go over that oil running down and it's white now but it'll dry gloss clear and it'll just make that look like it's wet okay we'll let that dry okay it's completely dry hopefully you can see the gloss on it I almost forgot the very last step and that is dry brushing some gunmetal gray and silver over it just on the very edges so let me show you for the last time <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I've got a primer on some of the pieces. Uh, so it's really starting to uh, get exciting now. This makes up an entire wall. This stands up. Um, this piece here was the front of the Nerf gun. So I cut that section off. And then on the end, I put a hair roller. Um, on this side, I put some drinking straws and a wire. And then in the center that was open, I put two thin uh, wooden dowels. So there you can kind of see what I did so now we can get this painted to look like metal maybe put some caution signs on it um, I actually covered there was some nerf logos on here that I just took a, a piece of plastic uh, styrene um, here's the plastic and cut the shapes and glued it on top of it and then i believe on this panel uh, i had to glue a piece on there because there was a warning label and it's like engraved in the plastic so uh, i'll probably end up cutting this straight across here and then just gluing on a piece of plastic, a rectangle, right over the top of that. And then for the holes, I have uh, an epoxy putty that I um, mix up and, and fill those holes with. So it's really getting exciting. Um, these here, what they were... Um, they were Star Wars lightsabers. So, and I cut the top off and then removed this piece. So now that'll make a nice um, drain pipe coming out of a wall. And then turned it upside down and started to glue on just little pieces of plastic, uh, pieces that were inside the gun. And just started gluing them on there. And then uh, the trim around the bottom of each of these is a zip tie that I just glued on there, super glued. And then 
um, here's the super glue I used. I put some on there along the bottom to represent corrosion and rust. And then while it was wet, I sprinkled on some salt and some uh, baking soda. And it gives it a texture. And now I'll paint that to look like rust. I did the same along uh, the bottom here. The more texture you can add, uh, the better and the more realistic. The more little parts like all these um, just make it more believable. And so you want to do all of that before you prime it. Okay, so we're going to make some type of generator. Now, I've seen this done on Facebook. I've seen this done on many uh, YouTube channels. You simply take a container, that bubble gum tape. Uh, then we're using two spools that thread was on. Now, I did take my file and filed so that they don't roll. They're just straight. So, we'll just glue all these together. And then we'll put a gray primer on it and paint it to look like metal. Well, some more primering done. Okay, let me show you where we're at so far on this. I even set some figures on here, sort of to give you an idea of the scale. Now the next thing I have to do is build this entire wall here. And there's a, a sliding door that gets put right here. It won't actually slide, but it'll look like it slides. Uh, it'll be a double door just like that one. So I have to go cut some more parts. I think the uh, leftover parts from the uh, Nerf gun that I cut up for the lower section, the rest of it I'll cut up for the top section. Um, a big thanks to uh, Doug Foscali who cut that catwalk for me. Um, really incredible. Thanks, Doug. It is all just uh, laser cut wood. Uh, this area here will be cut out and then that screen will be put in there but under it there will be some pipes that run out and uh, go into the water here so this is the sewer this is all underground um, the fan will be lowered this area will be cut out and uh, that screen, I'll put another screen over here for a walkway. And then um, water will be all down here. Okay, so this gun was pretty long. And uh, I had already used the front of the gun to create the uh, bottom wall section on our side wall. Uh, that left me with the back side of the gun. So the first thing I did was separated these pieces. Then I separated that and this. So on our top floor, I need a door that slides open. Okay, so we'll have it like this and I'll have to do a, a door that, that slides open. Then... Maybe we'll put these like that. Maybe we'll just put these like this. 
and then I can put some pipes coming up and some other panels and then that'll be our top wall section okay so I've got my pieces cut um, we're just gonna see how it looks Maybe something like that. And then we'll maybe cut a panel for this corner. And then I've got the same pieces that go over on this side. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so what I'm realizing though is that I have to get my bottom section completely painted and glued in place. And then I have to cut a piece of wood that sits on there sort of like a small shelf then get these panels painted and glued in place and then build a door that goes right there now I kind of have to do things in order I'm gonna have to take all of this off get my styrofoam completely glued in place and then get that completely painted actually and actually some weathering done to it then start on these two walls get these panels painted glued in place i've got hoses and pipes that fill in this area same back here there's all pipes that go in there uh, maybe actually some pipes in the front so the next thing will be to uh, remove all of this and get the styrofoam glued in place. Okay, next we're gonna do the concrete. And I don't know if you can see, but I've carved all my lines in it and then just started chipping away and putting cracks in it. And I even did the section that goes in front of it. And I just did the same thing. Uh, here's another piece. Okay, now I'm gonna paint all this using this and then I'll probably end up putting a uh, some type of black or a grayish black wash over the whole thing so it really gets in those cracks and uh, we'll dirty it up with some chalk and really make it look uh, grimy So this will probably take a couple coats. We'll let this dry and then put another coat over it and then put our wash over it. So I've mixed up a wash and it's just a uh, dark gray, it's called zinc, and a drop of black and a lot of water. This is like half full of water.
so as it's drying I keep going over it with a dry paper towel soaking up some of that wash especially right in the center As you can see, I'm kind of scrubbing on it. You just don't want to have a uh, like a circle patterns, a repeat pattern. So you just kind of got to scrub, dab, wipe. Okay, now I'm going to take that off and I'm just using white Elmer's glue and we're going to use real dirt. And we're going to put all dirt in here. And then after it dries, we'll put a wash over it and we'll make it look like mud and sludge in there. Just using a ratty old brush and just kind of moving it around, getting it where I want it. Now we'll just spray that. Now there's a denatured alcohol in here. And now I'm going to use, uh, it's half water, half glue. Okay, we'll let that completely dry and then we'll come back and put a wash over it and maybe use some green colors to make it look moldy and then we'll put a clear coat over just the dirt area to make it look like it's uh, damp and moldy. Okay, so it's the next morning. Um, I still have to carve lines in that and put cracks in it and then paint it and put a wash over it. Um, I did get that front put on before I went to bed last night. I'm extremely happy with how the uh, concrete is turning out. I have been brushing on some pastel chalks with a very fine brush in some of the cracks. You'll notice here I used a rust color around the opening there on the concrete and then had it go in the cracks too. So I turned the big light off next to this, hoping that you'll be able to see that rust a little bit better in the cracks. So this uh, mesh over the walkway is plastic. And it can be bought at any fabric store or craft store. And it's used for creating pictures with yarn. So since it's plastic, it's really easy to cut and takes paint really well. And it's the perfect scale. 
Okay, so that's where we're at so far. Uh, I don't want this video to get too long, so that's probably it until next time. And next time, very exciting stuff. We'll start putting rust and color and value on all of the gray items there. So thanks for watching. And until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone. <laughs>